Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today I have Daniel Erickson on the line. He's founder and CEO of Viable. Dan, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. All right, Dan. So uh, excited to do a deep dive into into Viable and to see you know how you're helping your clients. But before we get started with that, uh, we'll start this episode the way that we start them all with our Mission Matters Minute. So, Dan, we at Mission Matters we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. That's our mission. Dan, what mission matters to you? Yeah, so uh, my goal here at, uh, and mission here at Viable is to help teams make better decisions. Uh, in order to do that, teams need to be more informed. Uh, and we have, uh, we've been building Viable for the last three years uh, and have really had this sort of laser focus on helping our uh, target audience make the best decision they possibly can with the data that they have available to them. Now, up until very recently, uh, the only data that they've had available to them is quantitative data, things like, uh, you know, app, app usage metrics and, uh, and things like that. But, uh, we are actually allowing them to, to take the customer's voice into account as well, uh, by actually providing a lens into customer feedback, uh, to help them make the best decision possible for their customers. Awesome. Um, great having you on the show and love bringing mission-based individuals on the line who are trying to add value to the marketplace um, through their vision. So great to have you on again. Um, I guess just to get us kicked off, uh, tell me a little bit more about how you got started on this path and really to founding Viable. Like, like how did you get started? Yeah, definitely. So uh, I've been in the in the tech industry for a little over 15 years now, um, and uh, actually my co-founder here at Viable happens to be my identical twin brother. Um, we've been working together on and off actually for for a few years now, actually the entire time. Um, I'm a an engineer by trade, and he is a designer by trade. We kind of meet in the middle at product management. Um, so we've been in product teams uh, for for a long time now, um, and we really know the pain of uh, trying to trying to build the right product, um, you know, figuring out exactly what the customer needs, uh, you know, building that, uh, and then you know, iterating and uh, and learning more. Uh, so we've uh, we worked together back at Yammer. Uh, we worked together again uh, at Ease, uh, and now we're working together again here at uh, at Viable. Uh, when we first got our start here, uh, we actually were building a slightly different tool than what we than what we have now. Uh, which was uh, a productized version of the superhuman product market fit process. Um, if you're unaware of what that process looks like, it's basically a survey that you send out, you collect the responses, you use those responses to measure your product market fit and to improve uh, your roadmap, uh, or rather guide your roadmap to improve your product. Um, so back in late 2019 was when I was sort of looking around and figuring out what exactly I wanted to do next. Uh, and we came across uh, that article by Rahul Vora, decided to build that, uh, actually raised a little bit of funds from Craft Ventures and a handful of angels, including Rahul Vora over at Supreme, uh, and uh, quickly built that up, uh, launched it on Product Hunt, got a bunch of people using it, uh, but we quickly realized that the pre-product market fit uh, startup market uh, wasn't extremely easy to monetize. There wasn't a, a whole lot of uh, capital to go around there. Um, and so we ended up uh, actually finding that some larger companies were starting to use us that clearly already had product market fit. Um, so we uh, we quickly learned that uh, the there was a, actually a need up market for aggregating and analyzing customer feedback across a bunch of different channels. Um, turns out companies collect actually 80% of the data that they collect is unstructured text. Uh, it's things like customer support chats and call transcripts and uh, app store reviews and all of those, those things. Basically, if your customers are talking to you or about you, uh, they're giving you feedback in some way. Uh, and that feedback is a, is a huge gift. Uh, there's a ton, a ton of I incredibly valuable insights that are locked up in these data sets that, uh, that companies just don't even know exist. Uh, so what we built was an aggregation system that uh, takes data from all of those disparate sources, pulls it into one place, 
structures it, and then actually analyzes it for you to tell you what really matters. And that's what we do now. Hmm. It's, it's a great story. This is, this is a, lo- a lot of fun for me because I'm thinking about it because it seems like as, you know, if, if that's like the holy grail that like companies want to know how their um what their um you know what their clients or what the what what how how they're being perceived right how they're how they're meeting their marketplace number one but number two there's so many different like avenues like you said whether it's an app store or something else um to get that data like how do you know how to like like what to keep what to let out like how do you make that data meaningful because you have it coming from so many sources I'm, i'm curious yeah, definitely. Um, so different sources are useful for different things, right? If you want to improve your your app, then App Store reviews is a great way to start. Um, you can dig in there and you can understand, you know, exactly what those what are driving that uh, you know that that App Store rating for you. Um, and uh, if you're looking for to uh, looking to improve your uh, customer support processes, for example, you might want to pull in CSAT. Um, if you are looking for just overall customer sentiment, uh, you might want to do something like an NPS survey uh, and pull that in for the analysis. Um, so there's a bunch of different sources that help you do different things. Um, and then on top of that, once you've got all this data aggregated in one place, there's a lot of noise in that. Uh, in that, in fact, uh, we find that there's uh, usually somewhere between uh, about 20 and 50 percent of feedback that comes in uh, is just noise. Uh, it's things like, uh, you know, great, thanks for helping me out with that, or uh, I really love the app. Uh, you know, things that just aren't really actionable. Um, and so. Uh, first off, you got to do some sort of noise filtration. You got to be able to sort of read through and figure out, okay, this is this has signal and this doesn't. Um, we've we've been able to actually do that by training an AI to understand what signal looks like and what doesn't. Um, so we actually automatically uh, kind of do that noise filtration for you. And then on top of that, you should pass in what we call metadata uh, around each one of those pieces of feedback. And this is things like, here's the customer that left this, uh, this piece of feedback. They're an enterprise customer. They're an admin. Um, you know, they, uh, they joined in, uh, in April of 2020 um, or whenever it was, right? Um, so all this metadata you have about, about them, which can help you start to find patterns about who's actually giving you the highly actionable feedback. Uh, and then actually narrowing it down to just those people who really are your target market and understand exactly what their feedback specifically is. And so how does this, so let's take, and I know there's multiple angles that you could take this from, but I, I guess I want to focus on sales for a moment. Um, like how can, how can this be, whether you care to use a, you know, an example or, or a hypothetical, um, like how can this be for companies that are looking to do this, like used to drive sales? Yeah, definitely. Uh, we actually do have uh, quite a few companies who have been using us for uh, for call transcript analysis. Uh, so this is basically your your sales your sales team goes out, they have calls with customers. Inevitably, uh, a bunch of stuff comes up on those calls, right? You go through the demo, people have reactions to those demos, uh, people have objections at different parts of the sales cycle. Uh, they're able to, uh, you know, and they they express all of this stuff in a very unstructured way uh, on these calls. Now, previously, the only way that you could really do that is, or really understand this at a, at a higher level, uh, is to really rely on your salespeople to take great notes, put those into the CRM, uh, and then have sales leadership go through and read all of that to find the patterns. Mm-hmm. Um, now, though, there, what you can that. do. It's hard. It's hard, Dan. <laughs> right? Been there, done that, and it's hard. Any sales leaders listening are like, oh, yeah, that's what we do. So, <laughs> Yeah, there. and there's two, levels, there's two levels of difficulty there, right? One is actually getting the salespeople to write stuff down. Um, yeah. That, in my experience, has been, uh, it has been a challenge basically everywhere I've worked. Um, and then two is like the, the amount of time it takes to actually just read through everything, or if you're on Gong or something, listen to everything. Um, and so it just takes time. Uh, that's a lot of time to go through and figure out what, what are the customers actually asking for here. Um, and so uh, what we do is we actually pipe those gong, gong call transcripts, uh, the actual text from the, uh, from the call itself, uh, and then pipe that into Viable. Our system automatically reads through everything, tags everything with topics, uh, understands the sentiment around each one of those topics, uh, and then actually aggregates it all together into similar themes of feedback. 
uh, to help our customers understand exactly what, what is going on in those calls. Um, we can show you what the top complaints are, what the top compl- uh, top requests are, top compliments, and top questions that people are having uh, during those, those calls. So if you're a salesperson, you might want to dig in on, say, the top questions and make sure that you've got really great answers for each one of them. Or, uh, you know, some of those requests might be objections too, like, hey, I'd really love to pay for this thing, but I really need feature X or feature Y uh, before I can do that. Um, and those requests can help you sort of prioritize whichever one's most requested uh, at the top. Um, so from a product perspective, you can kind of fix stuff on the product side that way. And then from a sales perspective, uh, you can dig into those top questions, you can dig into the compliments and kind of use that as a, as a way of using the, the customer's own words uh, to express the, the value of the product uh, and so on and so forth. Yeah, it seems like it would all it could also maybe take out the bias of um of some of those objections and some of those conversations they're having of either the salesperson or even the uh the other person on the line because maybe they're getting a particular objection or thing that keeps coming up over and over for them. But if you look at the aggregate, um it may just be the one they remember, right? Or the one Yeah, they yeah. It's uh, it's the squeaky and, wheel problem. Yeah, so then it adds the uh, then it adds the actual data behind it to show like true insight, and then not only across salesperson but sales departments. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, it's it, like I said, the squeaky the squeaky wheel problem. Uh, you know, I don't know if you've if you've been on the the product side before, but uh, pr- one of product's main uh, main objectives is to understand exactly what they need to build. And in order to do that, they have to collaborate with a bunch of different teams, uh, from customer support to sales to uh, to customer success uh, to marketing. All of these have different lenses of the customer uh, and the customer needs uh, that they need to express back to back to product. But what happens is you end up with uh, a recency bias. So you end up with whatever came came up most recently comes up, uh, and then you also kind of have the, the a loudness bias. Whoever sort of shouting the loudest uh, kind of kind of wins uh, the prioritization there. Uh, so it can help. If you're kind of lost in the in the forest uh, and you're just seeing trees and you can't really see the whole forest itself, uh, it helps to to be able to zoom out and and see that whole that whole landscape uh, without you know having all of that uh, sort of human bias added into it. What type of uh, of companies uh, have you found got get the most value out of working with um, um, Viable? Is this for enterprise only, middle market? Can small businesses use this? I mean, give us a feel for who gets the most value. Yeah, so we, uh, the more data that you have, the more value you're going to get from us. Um, so, uh, we're finding that, uh, generally speaking, it is, uh, it is large and growing companies, uh, that, uh, that work best with us. Um, in, in fact, uh, in order for you to, uh, to get sort of meaningful, meaningful reports out, uh, you need, you need at least a couple thousand, uh, uh, pieces of feedback per month uh, for us to be able to uh, be more effective than a uh, than a manual process. Um, luckily, there's many many companies out there that have hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of pieces of feedback coming in every month. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, and what? Tell me a little bit more about your plan to uh, to grow and scale viable. Like, like how are you, how are you taking this to market further than you already have? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so. A couple of things. One, uh, we have a content system uh, that's working really well for us. Um, so we are currently active on uh, on social media, uh, as well as publishing one to two uh, posts on our uh, our website uh, every every week. Um, and this covers things that are directly related to our business. Uh, so you know how to analyze customer feedback and and all of that kind of stuff. But also goes into uh, some more uh, broad. Uh, topics around the the uh, emergence of artificial intelligence uh, for the enterprise, um, mm-hmm. and uh, specifically for how how to think about building products uh, with artificial intelligence in, in mind. Uh, because really, we are kind of riding a wave right now. Um, I don't know if you've been paying attention to the generative AI movement, uh, but we've had this this huge renaissance in AI in this last three years or so. Um, Starting back in 2020 when GPT-3 uh, first came out, uh, all the way up until now where we've just had chat GPT uh, hit a couple of weeks ago, uh, and then we had uh, uh, Stable Diffusion come out and Dolly 2 come out uh, to actually generate images. Um, so there's this sort of 
uh, big wave behind AI right now. Um, and right now we're just kind of surfing that wave. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, well, Daniel, um, it's been great having you on the show today and learning more about Viable. And I, I'm excited to continue to watch the journey of Viable and uh, see, see where you take this because I think you're adding a lot of value to the marketplace. Um, that being said, if somebody's listening to this and they want to learn more or they want to connect with your team, um, what's the best way for them to do that? Absolutely. You can find us online at askviable.com or on Twitter at, at askviable. Fantastic. And we'll, we'll put all that information in the show notes so that our audience can just click on the links and uh, head right on over. And speaking of the audience, if this is your first time listening to a Mission Matters episode or engaging with the platform,